Good evening. First of all, I want to give uh, a revolutionary greetings from the people of Venezuela, a Bolivarian greetings also for the people of Venezuela, and eco-socialist greeting from the people from Venezuela. <laughs> so, to me it's uh, an honor to be here with you guys, and uh, it is an honor for several reasons. One of the reasons is that uh, we have uh, a, 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 a depth with the solidarity network of Australia and Venezuela, and uh, it is a depth uh, that has to do with the solidarity work that uh, those guys are doing, trying to promote, to tell the people, not only from Australia, also for other parts of the world, how is coming and how the Venezuelan revolution is uh, getting shape. I want to give the thanks to be here to the embassy, to the people from the embassy, my friend, uh, the ambassador Nelson Davila, Mrs. Uh, Miriam Navarro that enjoy with us here. And also I want to give you the thanks to the Australian uh, Network, the Latin American Forum, and the Green, Left Green, and all of you to come here and uh, try to understand you know, my funny English. So, for that reason, I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to try to be going slow, and I hope so that uh, we could do that one very, in a very participatory way, because it's one of the things that we are learning down in, in our revolutionary process, how the people are participating, are talking and speaking, and are uh, defending from ideological and political point of view our revolutionary process. So, I want to start saying that uh, right now the the reality of the national policy in Venezuela, uh, it is a very complex situation. And it's a very complex situation because we are looking as a big commitment. We have a big commitment um, for everyone that are involved in the revolutionary process. And also we have a very promise opening situation that is being looking for many million of people all around the world. So I am working right now, I, I've been working for, for the president for many years ago, before the revolution, the, before he came president. And I am working right now uh, trying to coordinate uh, like uh, Mrs. Navarro say, the uh, University Institute of Agroecology, Latin American Agroecology Institute, Paulo Freire, that was a creation of the social movement in negotiation with uh, the Venezuelan uh, government. This is a unique experience. So far, we already has uh, graduated 66 agroecological engineering. This is the first university all around the world, even in Latin America, that graduate 66 agroecological engineering. That thing are happening just in revolution. You could imagine that could be able to happen in other places of the world. So we had a, a couple of meetings beginning this month with uh, the professors and the students that are all around in Venezuela. I am working directly with the Minister, Dr. Yadira Cordova, the Minister of uh, Higher University Education. And when we are talking about commitment and compromise, 
I, I have to tell you that those two meetings were among 1,500 students that came the first days of January to support any, any kind of proposition to defend the revolution. And also, the next, the week after, we have a meeting with 800 professors from several universities that uh, also came to write uh, a declaration that is in the web that has to do with the transformation of universities in Venezuela. This is a very unique process because it's a process that we are building by going one step, looking the mistake that we are doing, and going another step, I mean, overcoming the mistake that we are doing, I mean, that we, that we, that we made it. So, we saw in those meetings with teachers and students the potential that uh, the, the Venezuelan university, the new Venezuelan university and the university that are transforming are going on. And from that perspective, I'm going to be talking so about the national political context and what should be our role, your role in the defending the revolutionary process. So, in order to understand the Venezuela complex revolutionary process right now, we have to see the process from different type of dimensions from different type of light that give you, I mean, the objective about how the revolution goes. And one dimension is the leadership of President Chavez. Another dimension is what does it mean for our society, for the people from Venezuela, for the workers of Venezuela, the revolutionary process, not only in Venezuela, but just around the world. The third dimension that we have to take in consideration that play, that play a very, very important role in, the, in this month, when the last month and this month, was our constitution, you know? So, how much value it is this constitution, looking that from the historical perspective and being this historical perspective from the strategy that President Chavez is being defining, is, give, is being given our direction. The four dimension have to do with the problem that we have right now that is the continuation of the mandate of the president, which have to deal with the Constitution. There's no question about it. No? The Constitution is giving his support in the situation that is really right now. So the other big dimension is the hot and participatory level that the Venezuelan population is doing in the streets, is doing in the square, even though that the international media, which has been declared a war to Venezuela, you know, this is a type of a war, it's an unsymmetrical war, underground war, even though they want to, to appear, they want to, to say to uh, all, all around the world that in Venezuela is a crisis, it's an anarchy, it's a dictatorship, and Unfortunately, we have respond. We have answers of the people. We have, we have answers from the grassroots level. And that one is being manifested in another dimension that has to deal with the sickness, the really badly sickness and sad sickness of our president. So 
Other dimension that is putting in the table here is our victory, the election victory on October 7 and December, December 16. The, the victory that we have in the Supreme Court interpreting, you know, the Constitution and giving the support to the President why the President should be a stay and be given his mandate in the way that he, that he should be able to do it. This is an important point because if you have any doubt, we could be able to clarify. I mean, with question, I really would like that you will enjoy. I'm, I am promising to, to speak around 30 minutes. He will give me the yellow sign or, or the red sign. But I really want that you will talk and that you will participate it. And I really want that you will feel the revolutionary love that we are feeling, you know, for you guys and for the solidarity people that are working in Venezuela for our revolution. Okay? So, and those dimensions that I introduce right now, that one is not particular situation in any society. Thinking about it, for a moment, thinking about it. Those dimensions are happening and will be happening in revolutionary process. It's no question about it. And that one has ideological and social power against the international media. The people that understand, that really understand what is happening in Venezuela, they, they realize, you know, that the big, the big, uh, I would say, uh, the big wall that has the international media is the response that the people of the war and the people from Venezuela are giving to defend the revolution. And I'm going to give you some example in this statement that I am, that I am talking about. Another dimension that we have to put in the table is uh, the capitalist crisis. That uh, you see the sadness of the economical crisis that is in Europe and uh, that is coming from North America. Do you know the gain that is happening right now in, in the Congress? And perhaps in some years you are going to be getting that, that crisis, no? The capitalist crisis. And when we're talking about the capital crisis, we have to talk that if more deep is the capital crisis, more aggressive is the capitalism with its forces. More aggressive. And that one is the best expression of the international media that is unbelievable what we are seeing. The undevil images, pictures, Twitters, Facebook, emails against the health of President Chavez. I suppose that you all know the big show that one of the important newspapers in Spain made two weeks ago. Thinking about it, thinking about if you build how that picture, how that movie that went around the world, you know, how many people are behind that? How many people are interested to damage <coughs> the image of one guy that is giving us the opportunity to understand several truths in order to organize a society 
like is the society of Venezuela. And this one is the point that I want to keep here in your mind. Because uh, those people that has the privilege to work close to the president, one thing that we learn from him, and we are learning from him, is to find the truth in a revolutionary process. So, thinking about it, that uh, when capitalist crisis and the aggressivists, you know, that they have against Venezuela means that we must and we will defend in the revolutionary process for any price for our life. Because a law to lose the process means surrender. And we won't be surrendered just because we are not too going to lose our dignity and also the dignity of the people that are facing, you know, and the people that are supporting in a planetary level the revolutionary process. So right now, each political decision, each political decision that the people are front in the government <coughs> have to take in consideration several, three big aspects. One is uh, the leadership of President Chavez. There are intellectuals, there are people in Latin America, intellectual people in Latin America, that are talking about that the Chavez leadership, it is unique, original, around the world. So his, his strategy, his vision, the way that he learned to us to approach the situation, the way that he always is taking consideration the war of the Venezuelan people. I have, I have several examples that I'm going to, to share with you guys. And the view that he has taking con in consideration, taking in consideration how the Venezuelan people is participating and how the Venezuelan people is teaching and is learning us how we could be able to move the process. President Chavez is taking in consideration and is always is being taken that and that's when it's a, it's a learn that we have, uh, we, have to, we have to get it. And one good example and Federico that has spent several months in Venezuela, if you analyze the first document back before uh, Chavez came to the power, the Agenda Bolivariana, and go to the Constitution, and go to the great jump when we define the 10 strategic objectives, and go to the national the, the, the first national plan, Simón Bolívar, 2-7 to 2-12, and go and stay here in the second socialist plan, 2-13, 2-19, you will see the footprint of President Chávez. And you will see the evolution of the Venezuelan process, even though that we have a bunch of criticism, a bunch of reflection, a bunch of mistakes, that we are doing. And we have to be honest. And we have to be auto-criticized, as the president say. I am here to, uh, to, to clarify many doubts. And I'm, I have to be uh, uh, sincere with you guys, try to explain you know, the, your doubts, your reflection, your recommendations. So in those documents that I show you, Always, the president is 
motivating the people, convoking the people, organize the people, talk with the people, and analyze with the people. One good example that I have to tell you is that, do you know how many people are tweeting, Twitter, the President Chavez? Do you have an idea? Jim, do you have an idea about how many people are, uh, are tweeting Chavez? Who knows? I mean, I mean, guess. One million. Three million. One point eight million. No, you are wrong. <laughs> Three million nine hundred and fifteen nine hundred eight Twitter are following President Chavez. Look at the internet. So I am. This is a very interesting figure. And I ask that question because in the revolutionary process and uh, in the social movements and in the revolutionary movement around the world came something very interesting that the people adopted during the last presidential elections. There were around 23 people from Australia, that I suppose that are here in, in, uh, in, in uh, Brigada, that were close looking what happened in the election in the, in the October 7, and also in, in December 16. And one slogan that start to be involved in the social movement, in the international social movement is, uh, I am Chavez, you are Chavez, she is Chavez, he is Chavez, everyone is Chavez. What does it mean by that for you guys? Thinking about it. Tell me one leader around the world in our critical moment, in our social moment, in our reality that put out that idea. So, last week there were some uh, 200 people in the consulate of Boston yelling, we are Chavez, you are Chavez, he is Chavez. So, from the sociological point of view, thinking for a moment about that. And uh, what does it mean for us that sentences? I mean, we could be able to make so many speculations, but uh, one key speculation right here is that behind that sentences, it is a feeling, it is ideological conviction that there is one guy, there is one man that is telling around the world that another war is possible to build. And beginning to talk about eco-socialism, the best document, I would say uh, the best uh, heresy legado, legacy. the best legacy that President Chavez is giving us, it is this document right here. This is the synthesis of 13 years of revolutionary process. You say that the second socialist plant, Programa Patria, 2013-2019. So, when we are talking about this program and uh, in the capacity to convoke, to, to, to call the people and say, listen, 
after the election in October, back in October, President Chavez said, okay, we're going to prepare the election for governors, but the election for government is going to be adding the discussion of this paper. You know how many suggestions, how many recommendations we got so far between uh, the end of October and December 10? Close than 6,000 recommendations are estranging this document. And now you are getting, you are understanding the meaning we are Chavez. Everyone is Chavez. Why? Another speculation, another point of view, another route. This document has five historical objectives. Those five object, those five historical object objectives are divided in 25 national objectives. And those 25 national objectives spray close than more than 500, 500 strategic objectives. The five big historical objectives have to do full national independence. Full national independence. The second, walk toward eco-socialism, no? socialism of 21 century, walk toward getting in consideration the ideological and political value of Simón Bolívar that has to do, that we have to work to give to the Venezuelan population the most happiness that we could be able to give it to them. The third objective has to do with uh, the look Venezuela as a potential, economic potential, social potential, political potential. We had today in the morning a very nice discussion, very interesting discussion in the transition process of about, about the economic. Even though, even though that we have, <clears throat> that you know guys, that we have a very highly productive oil country. The four objectives have to do with the solid solidarity that you are doing right now to listen to me and doing in other places that have to do with the new geopolitical view that we are going to give to the world when we are defined to be a country, multi-criterio and pluricultural country. When we are accepting any type of the diversity culture, even if we have the different, the ideological and political difference. And the fifth objective has to do with the save the planet and save our life. So, if you think for a moment, you make a reflection for a moment, if we integrated those five objectives, there are a bunch of people that are thinking, that are making theory, a cosmobiolist, no? People that are giving so many ideas to the world that the another world is possible even if we start to build a politics, a humanitarian politics and civilization politics. What does it mean in the Venezuelan process and how the Venezuelan process is presented of the war? That we have to think and we have to act permanently and simultaneously thinking in a planetary uh, uh, world, in a planetary, in the continental aspect, in the regional aspect, and also in the local aspect. 
and that one means the beginning of the eco-socialismo. Because we see the eco-socialismo, the social problems and the impact environmental problems getting together, walking together in a strange hand. In that point, start the eco-socialismo. Here, I could be able to give an example. We are hoping and we are working, and that was once one of the, the requirements of the President Chavez before he go to Cuba, in, back in, in, in December 8, we are planning to have 60% of the Venezuelan population organized in comunas in 2019 which means 30 million of Venezuelan people should be organized. His political administration of the territory should be in comunas. So, taking these considerations, we, we, are, we are able to think that this program is giving to the people, not only the Venezuelan uh, uh, population, the possibility to understand how a revolutionary government could be able to organize the society, the civilization in that society, and, like I told you before, some humanity politics, or politics for humanidad. Thinking about how deep are these ideas and thinking about why we are, I mean, we are, why we are understanding why the people say you are Chavez, he is Chavez, we are Chavez, everyone is Chavez. I mean, you have a, another explanation, you have another idea, and if you have another suggestion, welcome. We are really interested to, to, to go deep and understand that situation. I'm going to just finish now and, and I, I will give you your idea in order that you could be able to participate it. Okay? So, uh, another aspect that uh, I would like to get is the sickness, the disease of President Chavez. So, because his health is a guarantee of peace in Venezuela and also in everywhere down in Latin American countries. The opposition, the political opposition and the media and the imperialism Yankee doesn't know doesn't know how to react in front of the strategy that has the sickness of the President Chavez. And that one is the reason what we have, the right to reserve and respect the health of condition of President Chavez. So, the imperialism knows that President Chavez is in equilibrio for the Venezuelan society and from many movements. But also think too that they have to get away from the President Chavez. The imperialism plays several, several games several strategy, even though using, using several people that are working for the imperialism. Like example that we have the Spain people and all of the government that are playing couple of, playing two games, three games against the Venezuelan revolution. So, when President Chavez 
has been in a critical condition that he, that the revolutionary forces, the revolutionary forces and uh, the military forces are pushing the President Chavez to take a decision to go and start with a violent process, the President Chavez say stop it. We are going to use the military force to defend the Venezuelan population. We are not to use the military force to make the aggression of the Venezuelan population. It's a very big difference. And it's a strategy, I mean, around there. So, always he appealed to the Constitution. Always he's looking for the Constitution and he's looking the answer in the Constitution. And just finishing as a third aspect that has to do with the continuation of the mandate of the President Chavez. The President Chavez was re-elected. The President Chavez took out of the country with the permission of, of the National Assembly. What happened that is not written here in this Constitution is the biological condition of any, any, any president. Because what happened here is the biological condition, I mean, I mean, the situation of President Chavez depending on the biological condition of him, and that one is not written here in the Constitution. So he was re-elected, and the Constitution say that he could be able to be, to make a judgment. And for many people in Venezuela, judgment doesn't, doesn't mean so much because means so much the commitment of the people with the defending the revolutionary process. So he's very delicate. He is recovering. We have a, a good news today that uh, he was more active and he is more, uh, more alive. I mean, he's never lost his conscience, he never lost uh, his mind, he was very delicate and his immune system is weak due to the many aspects of his sickness that is very complex. This is the point. But President Chavez is going to back. We are, we are not that one. And President Chavez is going to back and he's going to come to his duty, and I bet you, I bet you, that he's going to tell the Venezuelan people and he's going to tell all the people around the world that the time that he, he will retire it and the time that he say, listen, buddy, I have to take care. I'm going to retire. I'm going to declare my, my fault, and I'm going to go election. I'm going to go to... I don't know. There are many, many possible ways that we could be able to keep going our revolution. Many here in this constitution. Not only the vice president and the president, the vice president Maduro, or even the president of General Assembly. And the last point that I have to tell you is uh, that uh, the opposition doesn't have any, even south, even north. The opposition, the, cap the, the political capacity of the opposition is weakness, you see. They receive direction from the imperialismo, you see, and they are confusing receiving and giving the direction to the imperialismo. They have a bunch of contradictions. They don't have uh, any political project, any political plan and they obey the interests of the uh, imperialism. So, in that situation, now, you could be able to realize that even the movement of the, all of these things that are happening in the government are slow, we are, we are in a collective, in a collective uh, uh, process. I mean, understanding 
given a shape, taking in consideration too many factors to make a good decision that we have to do it in this complexity situation. So thank you so much for your attention and I will be really happy to enjoy your question, your suggestion, your, your recommendation, okay?